Hey everybody, Naresh here, welcoming you back into another video, which is so not normal for my channel. Usually on my channel, you're going to see stuff for the Kodi streaming world and some fantastic tech product reviews. But now I really wanted to jump into the computer building. So now I had a chance because my son wanted a gaming PC for his Christmas present. So I said to him, I'll build you a gaming PC for this Christmas. So I went on YouTube to find a gaming PC builds. When I saw all those videos of top YouTubers, guys, I'm not saying the small ones, all the top ones, I've seen it. And most of the time what I was seeing actually, either they are promoting something, either it's the bill they are making this too expensive, can't afford it, a normal gamer can't afford it, to be honest with you. I'm sure most of you will agree with me on that. The third was, it's like all the instructions they were giving were not making sense to me, to be honest with you. That's my own opinion. I'm not denying that. There are some experts on the other side of this screen. They might have a different opinion about it. So I decided to have my budget under 800 pounds and to use some old parts I have left from the mining actually. So I have got a GTX 1070 which I'll be using in this build. Now for this gaming build I'm using this ROG Strix B360F gaming motherboard which is very nice in terms of graphics and also the motherboard is very nicely compatible with the gaming features. Motherboard itself is compatible with the 8th generation of Intel processors and all useful future compatible ports are available on the motherboard too. Now for the CPU I have chosen Core i5-8600. For the RAM I'm going 16 GB DDR4 Corsa Vengeance LPX which is kind of okay and also decided to go with M.2 SSD drive now for the graphics art, which is also from the ASUS ROG, G4 GTX 1070. This is a bit of a strange decision for me to use this cooling system for the CPU. I think it's a bit of overkill. I know this personally because I'm not doing any overclocking whatsoever. But the reason I chosen this one was especially because I wanted a less amount of sound coming out of the computer case. That was the only decision. But if you don't want to use it, Get rid of it guys. And for the power supply, I've gone with the EVGA 600 watt 80 plus, which is ample enough for the PC we are building today. Now in last but not least, the PC case, which is very important when you're building a gaming PC because the looks are very important. You wanted to see all the hardware with RGB lights, to be honest with you. So that's why I've gone with this case, which is from MZXT H500. Now just before I go ahead in the building process, let me mention to you one thing guys that I'm a very new to this computer building process. If I have made any mistakes in the process, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to take all your comments as, my, as a feedback and learn from it. So let's get right into it. So first, let's start with the motherboard where I'll be installing CPU, RAM, and a solid state drive. Now before installing any part like a CPU, RAM, M.2 solid state memory on your motherboard, I would highly recommend every one of you to consult with the user manual which come with your motherboard. So now let's go ahead and install our CPU which is Core i5-8600. Now if you look into the CPU, we have a golden triangle on one of his corner. So you need to make sure that the CPU golden triangle should match with your motherboard CPU socket triangle, which is right in here. Now simply place your CPU on top of it. Make sure it's sitting properly. Once it's done it, put the cover latch back on top of it and lock it. Now after that you can install the provided cooling fan but in this build I'm going with the Coolmaster AIO system which I will show you later in this video. Now after installation of CPU we need to go ahead with the system memory. This motherboard come with the 4 DDR4 quad line memory modules dim slots and I will be installing this Corsair DDR4 to 8 gigabytes. 2666 megahertz frequency vengeance lpx ram now at this stage it is also important to consult your motherboard manual because here it will give you information what is the recommended memory configuration you're going to have 
Now, as you notice that I'm going total of 16 gigabytes of RAM with the two 8 gigabytes of RAM. So as per motherboard recommendation, I have to go with the DIMM B2 and DIMM A2. Now, all the information about DIMM slots are also available on top of motherboard. Now, first open up all slots. Now, as soon RAMs are pushed in, they will get locked in here. Now, after RAM, we need to install M.2 hard drive. The reason I gone for this one is basically to have a minimal amount of wiring hanging on top of the motherboard. Now, the SSD drive which I'm using in this build is by, is by Western Digital WD Blue 3D NAND SATA SSD M.2 22. 250 gigabytes which is decent enough for the operating system only this is obvious that i'll be also installing another standard hard drive too now to install this solid state drive it is very important to know the type this one is m.22280 and for the installation instruction consult motherboard manual which will show you how you can install m.2 for the type which is 2280 m.2 or for the drive which are 2260 or 2242M.2. Now the good thing about this motherboard was it come with the two M.2 slots but the one right in here is with the heat sink. You can remove it down here if you want to. Now I have decided to install my M.2 SSD drive right in here. The reason is now in this PCI Express slot I will be installing my graphics card. So I really don't want it to compromise the look of the heatsink as well as and in case of any issues with the hard drive I will end up opening whole case. Now first you need to install these stands off which are also available in motherboard box. Make sure you secure it by using proper tools, not like mine. Now get your M.2 hard drive and simply slide in right in here and push down. That's how easy and straightforward it is. Now on the back of this M.2 heat sink, you have a sticker. Remove it. Now for this build, I'm using Coolmaster Master Liquid ML240 LRGB cooling system. For that, you need to install this chassis on the back of this motherboard, which is very easy to do. So, once you install them, you are good to go and install this motherboard in your PC case. Now the PC case which I have chosen for this build is by NZXT, model number H500. Now there were so many good things which I liked about this PC case. Let me show you each one of them one by one. So now the first one is this tempered glass will never get hazy like acrylic ones. Easy to open without use of a screwdriver. Now once completely open you can do a nice cable management in here. Now on this side you can also install your two 2.4 inch hard drives and nicely pass all the cables right in here into the motherboard. In here, you can also install the standard 3.5 inch hard drives too. Now, in this area, you can install your switch mode power supply with dust filter. You have got a filter right in here. Now, the overall design of the case is perfect. On top of the case, you're going to see a power button, two USB ports, input and output for audio, as well as the hard drive LED. Now, we have fully built the motherboard. And it's time for the building of the case. Starting with the power supply, I'm using EVGA 600 watt power supply, which is ample enough for this build. So that's our power supply where the fan will be facing downwards. Now, once you get your all four screws for the power supply, then nicely secure them and make sure it's all parallel too. Now once power supply is installed, keep all the cables right in here. 
stuck them all in for a while. And now right in the front here you have a plate which will be going to be installed on the radiator. So now let's get the motherboard installed in the case. With the help of this motherboard you don't need to install any IO shield whatsoever. Everything is pre-built in here. Simply just put your motherboard inside. And make sure everything sits down very nicely. You also have a one standoff here which goes into this hole here. Very nicely secured. Now once motherboard is laid inside your PC case, use the proper screws to fasten it all. Now install your radiator inside your PC case. Make sure you cover up your AIO pump for it to hitting inside the motherboard and damaging things. Now apply some cooling paste on top of your CPU. You don't need to be very crazy with it. A little bit will do the job. It's just a thermal conductance paste. That's what it is. But if you won't use it, it will cause a pretty hefty damage for sure. Now peel off this protection layer from your IO pump. And let's install this thing now inside. Now once you have all the screws placed around the CPU cooler, Use manufacturer method to secure them. So now let's install our graphics card which is GTX 107. Now once we have secured every single part which we need on our CPU case, now it's time to wire up everything starting with the motherboard connection with your power supply following with the fans. I'll be using all the information which is provided by the manufacturer starting with the power connection on the motherboard. Now first to start with we have two connections which are going to the motherboard. First one is a EATX 12 volt, another one is a EATX power. ETX 12 volt will be right in there and power would be right in there. All the cables from the power supply are marked as well like this one which is for CPU which is EETX 12 volt. So here is our ATX power for motherboard which is also marked as well. So is your PCI for GPU. So is your PCI power connection going to the GPU. Now connection for two front 3.1 USB ports which will be straight away going into the motherboard. Now after connecting 3.1 USB port let's finish with the front HD audio as well as the hard drive LED power switch and also the power light which will be going into the motherboard right in here. Now once that is completed Let's go ahead with all the fans connections. Now all together in the whole system we have got one, two, three, four fans. Two of them are for the chassis, two of them are on the radiator and one of them is AIO pump. So for the installation you always consult with the motherboard manual as well as the cooling system provider. Now for the master cool both of these fans will be connected on port right in here 
where the one connection is for the CPU fan, another one for CPU OPT port. Now once them two are connected, after that connect this 3 pin AIO pump. Now we need to, now to finish with, we need to connect these both chassis fans down in the ports right in here. Now after finishing all the fans, let's connect these RGB cables. Motherboard also come with this RGB system, so I'm going to use that one rather than using the Coolmaster provided kit. Now installation of these RGB terminals are very straightforward. Everything is marked up with the pointer. You just need to follow the instructions. That's it. Once you've done all of them, I use this bridge which came with the Coolmaster system. Now this triangle pointing outwards is basically a sign of 12 volt. So you need to make sure you connect it to the 12 volt of your motherboard, which is called RGB header. As you can see, the first pin, which is 12 volt, and they should be matching with your triangle. And second one is a G, which is for green, and R for red, and B for blue. So let's get it connected. Now at this point, we are completely done with the PC building a process. I would do a dry run actually, just to make sure everything is good before I tidy up all the wiring around it. So let's get into that. So here's the first power of, of motherboard. As I can see the sign of life in here. That's not bad. Let's turn the power on. Voila. There we go. Now after first power up, I've noticed a couple of issues. So to tackle them, I have to move this M.2 SSD drive from slot number 2 to number 1 because that's where I can use it and the second was I started to tidy up all the wiring which you can see that you can see less amount of wires in the cabinet and tidied all the wiring on the back as well very nicely in management left all the power supply cable right in there because they're not I can't see them so they are not a problem to me and also installed a standard eSATA hard drive to keep the games on all these other things now after making all the changes of moving M.2 onto slot number one and installing a hard drive let's power up the whole system and see how it's going to perform after installing all the bits and bobs there you go right in there well straight after power up if you see this screen that means there's no hardware issue whatsoever now just before going ahead with installation of windows or anything else I would highly recommend every one of you just to make sure that whatever hardware you installed on your motherboard you should be able to see it and make sure it's available in here as well I can go into this easy mode which will give me information about the motherboard and what CPU I have and RAMs where I'm using them and stuff like that even in the cooling section it will tell you everything about it if you like to check the fans are working perfectly fine go in here and make sure you click onto the full speed and there you go, you're going to hear the sound itself, which means we're telling you everything is pretty good. So there we go, now we have Windows, all the drivers and everything is fully installed in our computer build. I have also installed this Fortnite Omega in there as well, which looks meant to be honest with you. Now let me put the whole tempered glass on top of it. Now you have seen this all building process, I have also installed the windows along with all the necessary drivers to be installed on it. If you're interested in that video, link would be available in the video description. And please guys, let me know in the comment section down below that what do you think about my video. All the comments will be considered as a feedback. Thank you very much for watching this video. Shall see you soon into another video. Bye.